<laughs> okay, guys, this was good. This was really good. This is exactly what I wanted. User systems, you guys, sent me pictures of your stuff, but it, of complete systems mostly, not exclusively, but stuff that's under a thousand dollars. I asked for, for images, you sent them my way. I very much appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who made the effort. Um, and what, what I got was more than I expected that there were vintage systems, there were DIY systems, lots of interesting, quirky things in there uh, from all over the world, which is fantastic. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get to it and take a peek. First up, Jacob. He's 25 years old. He's from the Netherlands. Uh, he mostly listens to music with his MacBook Pro. But on special occasions, he spins vinyl on a Sansui SR222 Mark II turntable with an Audio-Technica AT95 cartridge. Uh, the amplifier is an Ankyo A9010, um, and the speakers are Wharfdale Diamond 220s. The amplifier is new, but all of the other stuff he got secondhand. Next up, Roberto. He's from uh, Santiago, Chile. He's got a small apartment, but he has ELAC debut B6 speakers, a Harman Kardon HK3490 receiver, a FIO X3 second generation portable DAP, and a Sony Blu-ray. That's his system. Sounds sweet. Then there's a guy who actually lives not far from me. His name is Richie, and um, he lives in Brooklyn. And his system costs a total of $1,150. He has Klipsch RP600M speakers, uh, Marantz PM8005 integrated amplifier, a Sony DVP-S9000ES SA CD player, Cambridge Audio CXN network streamer, a Technix SL1301 turntable with a Shure V15. Ooh, I haven't seen those in a while. Cartridge, pretty good. We may hear more from Richie in the future. Then we have Janez. He's running Monitor Audio Bronze 2 speakers. He has a Denon RCD M41 DAB stereo receiver. It's 30 watts channel. And he has a shit body 3 connected to an HP laptop. Good going. Michael. <laughs> Michael sent along a very specified system here with the dollar amount of everything he paid. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But the speakers are Pioneer Elite EBS 73s that he paid $330 for. They were brand new. He also has a Pioneer Elite A35R receiver uh, that costs $160, but he spent $120 to fix it, so he's in for $280 total. He's running Chromecast, uh, blah, 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 blah. There's an optical pay cable he paid five bucks for, a USB A cable that he paid three dollars for. Uh, it's all in there, folks. The whole thing, the whole shebang, was $834.77. <laughs> Russell sent me a note. He said he's an old musician and a bicyclist, and he's from Peora, Illinois. His system is modest, he says. Um, he has an Adcom GTP 350 tuner preamp and an Adcom GFA 535 power amp. His turntable is a Pioneer P1115 with a Shure M95 cartridge. But, you know, um, scanning down here, the thing that jumped out at me were his speakers. He has, from 1967, Bozak B300s. Mike didn't send the entire system. He's from Belgium. But what he did send, I think, is pretty cool. It's a 1973 Toshiba SB404 4-channel amplifier <laughs> that had a button on it for surround. Yeah, I bet. And... Uh, the amp, he says, is very direct and open sounding with good dynamics, lacks some bass. And then there's the 1973 Toshiba ST500 tuner. Rene has a Lin Axis turntable he bought, used for 300 bucks. He has ELAC debut 6.2 speakers that he paid 150 bucks for on Black Friday sale. He has a Cambridge Audio SR 
20 Topaz Integrated Amplifier, 425 bucks. Uh, and the Yoka MP110 cartridge, you know, a nice system. Very nice, I'd say. Steven tells me that Herb Reichert from Stratifile, a reviewer, ruined his budget, but he's, uh, he's hanging tight there. He has an Onkyo Integra A8170 integrated amp that's from 1989. He paid 100 bucks for it. The tuner is an Onkyo T4120, $20, good going. The CD transport is a Sony Blu-ray DVD player that he paid $60 for. Uh, he has a shit uh, full of two DAC, 50 bucks. The subwoofer is a Yamaha he lifted from a cheap surround system, $15. And the speakers are PV PRM 281 studio monitors <laughs> in granite. Uh, very heavy, high quality, but not real granite, 75 bucks. This guy, uh, he just took a picture of his headphones, which I think are really cool headphones. I'd like to hear these things. His name is Ostep, and these are Yamaha HP1 orthodynamic headphones. He paid 15 bucks for them. Orthodynamic is uh, the original way that we used to call planar magnetics. So planar magnetics are ortho, orthodynamic headphones. TED system. His speakers are DIY. They have a four inch full range driver from Radio Shack. The amplifier is a mini watt N3. That's a tube amp. The turntable is a Project Essential USB with a built in uh, phono preamp. The speaker cables are DIY and the interconnects are DIY with Mogami cable. Lewis is keeping it simple. He's got a Topping MX3 DAC amp uh, for headphones. The speakers are Martin Logan LX15s, and there's a Martin Logan Dynamo 700 sub. Russ has a Riga Planner 1. Uh, the cartridge is an Audio Technica ATV M95. Speakers are Edifier S2000 Pros. Brett. He has this little kitchen system that consists of a small amp with a Bluetooth receiver with boards from Parts Express inside a DIY Baltic Birch housing. The speakers are Dynaco A102s he picked up on Craigslist. The source is just his phone, either plugged in or Bluetoothed. Christopher. Christopher. Hey, Christopher. You got a $414 system here with a... Fire 7 inch tablet with an OTG USB cable adapter, a topping D10 USB DAC, a Monoprice Liquid Spark headphone amp, and Hi Fi Man HE 400i planner magnetic headphones. All together, 414 bucks. Chancellor has uh, a $740 system with Polk Audio LSIM 703s. He picked up open box for $440. The pre-pro is an Emotiva PT100. That was hundred bucks when it was brand new. The amp is a Harman Kardon PA2200 that was free. It was given to him by his father. Uh, he's streaming Bluetooth. His cables are handmade cables. He, he did it himself. And uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty nice system for $740. Jacob, I like this picture a lot. Very snazzy. That is a Braun PS500 turntable from 1968 that he paid 250 euros for. The amp is a Braun as well. It's called the CSV 13. It was made in 1963 and it cost him 450 euros. Narajas, sorry about the pronunciation, sent this picture of a NADC 328 integrated amp. Uh, also, he has BNW CDM1 speakers, they're 20 years old, and a Sioux research sub. He didn't specify which model, it was $399. So the total cost was $1,225. Chris has a vintage 
Pioneer receiver. It's a model SX77 that he paid a hundred bucks for on Craigslist. EPOS ELS3 bookshelf speaker, 125 bucks on eBay. And a shit Mahdi and a shit Mahdi 2 DAC, $149. And he actually bought at the shitter, the brick and mortar shit store. Next up is Jacob from Brisbane, Australia. He's got a little DIY system he put together a few years ago. The angled speaker cabinets are his own design and they use a four inch Dayton Audio RS100 full range driver. The amplifier is a 20 watt kit amp, uh, well suited to these smaller speakers, says Jacob. Everything has been finished in Tasmanian oak wood veneer that's native to Australia. And he currently runs this system in his home office. Travis has a home theater system. Uh, this may be the only one in this collection. Uh, we're mostly stereo guys around here, but hey, home theater is welcome just as well. And he has a, um, a Sony DAV HDX265 with a sound bar. I guess it's not a powered sound bar. It, which is an episode ES500 slash 40 with four inch woofers and one inch titanium woofers in an aluminum cabinet. The subwoofer is a Polk PSW505. It's a 12 inch sub. So the total amount for he paid for this system for the audio part is $480. Pretty good. Take a gander at Jesse's system. He's got that tiny little amp, a Vista Audio Spark. I reviewed that thing. Very nice. Shit Bifrost DAC. He has an old Riga Planer 3 from 1993 that he paid $200 for. The speakers are DIY. They feature Bob Bryan's uh, design full range towers. A friend uh, from New York built these things for him. Very cool. Bob didn't exactly meet my requirement for systems that are less than $1,000, but I still thought it was pretty cool. And his Zoo Dirty Weekend speakers are usually around $1,000, so by that standard, uh, he got in. Before he had these, uh, these Dirty Weekends, though, he had Axiom Audio, Ascend Acoustics, Andrew Jones Pioneer Design speakers, he's had uh, Boston acoustic speakers. He said the zoo is unlike any of them. Very, very different sound, but he likes it. Hey, that, that was really fun. Thank you to everyone who submitted pictures. I'm sorry I can't run all of them. Uh, what can I say? Oh, you know, I might be doing a video contest some down down the road where you make your make a video of show us your kind of things. Uh, that'll be fun. I'm thinking about how to do that most efficiently. Um, but otherwise, this is still the Audiophiliac Daily Show coming to you from Brooklyn. Uh, and you're all over the globe. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, if you dig this channel, please subscribe. If you uh, want more from me, check out the Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. Uh, what else can I tell you? Share these videos, like them, do all that social media stuff. And if you've gotten this far, yeah, check out the Patreon at p a t r e o n dot com slash audiophiliac. See you again real soon. Bye bye.